Welcome to part two in our tutorial series on audio implementation using CryEngine 5.6 and FMOD Studio. In part one, we added the sounds of gunfire and ambience to our Chinese garden level. In this tutorial, we'll add the sounds of footsteps and foley to the first person player character. Before we get started, we need the level files and the audio assets, which are part of the audio showcase package that you can get from the CryEngine documentation website right here. You'll also find a link to that page in the description below. For more information on how to set up the CryEngine and FMOD Studio project, take a look at the first video tutorial in this series, also linked below. Besides FMOD Studio, we'll also look at the character tool, which we'll use to implement the audio events. Once you've downloaded the tutorial assets, you need to make sure that none of the files we're gonna use are write protected because well, that would interfere with our nefarious plans to make them change their evil ways. So open the audio showcase folder you unzipped, select all files in the folder, right click and choose properties, and then clear the read only flag and click OK. In the pop-up dialog that follows, make sure you apply that change to all folders and files in the hierarchy below. Now that that's out of the way, we can get down to the business of making some noise. To kick things off, let's just listen to our footstep and Foley audio assets. You can find these in your audio assets backslash FMOD studio backslash chapter two tutorial folder. You'll notice that we only have six assets, three variations on footsteps and three Foley sounds. In a real game scenario, you'd probably want to create a lot more unique assets, but for now, six is enough to learn how the randomization features work in FMOD studio. Let's start by creating our setup in FMOD Studio. First, we need to import our audio assets into the FMOD audio bin. Click on Window, Audio Bin, or press Control 3 if you're nimble fingered, to open the audio bin. Create a new folder and name it Animation. Drag and drop all of the audio assets into that folder. Afterwards, create a new folder in the Events tab and name it Animation as well. The next step is to create our three FMOD events. The footstep setup needs two 3D events, one for each foot, or seven if you're making an octopus that got into a fight with a shark who digs calamari. The Foley sound should not have a specific playback position, so we need to create one 2D event. Instead of creating all of the events individually and then assigning the assets to each event, we'll use a little trick. Select all footstep assets in the audio bin and drag them onto the animation folder in the events tab. In this window, we need to set the event type option to 3D event and activate the option called create a new event with one multi instrument and then select create. Repeat that step to create a second event. Now to keep the project nice and clean, we should name both of the events now. So let's call them play C player FTS wood L, like left, and play C player FTS wood R. In fact, the system doesn't care about the names, but I do. No, I don't. Uh, but you do, because you want to make sure to use a naming scheme that's consistent from the beginning as projects tend to grow until it becomes impossible to keep track of every sound if you don't follow a consistent naming scheme. But you already knew that. Create one last event for the Foley sound. In this case, we need to create a 2D event, and once it's created, name it something like Play C Player Foley Leather Long, or whatever name makes sense to you. Now, with the power of stereo headphone technology, it's a new thing, we're able to position the footstep sounds on either side of our very own skull. This can be achieved with CryEngine or within FMOD. The first method would be to position the sound effects in the game on the left and right side. Now, that's an awesome method if we want to manipulate position by game logic or the player's rotation. In our case, though, the left foot will always be on the left side of the player, so there's no need to dynamically change position. So we can use the pan override feature of FMOD's Spatializer. Selecting a 3D event displays all effects that are assigned to the master track of this event. By default, the spatializer is part of this effect chain. By the way, the only difference between a 2D and a 3D event is the added spatializer on the master track. Deleting this effect from a 3D event would transform it right back to a plain old 2D event. That's 
just the way it goes. Now, this small white arrow in the Spatializer effect window reveals the Pan Override option. Begin by increasing the mix dial to 100% in order to fully override the engine's positioning and only use FMOD's position. The white dot in this circle represents the sound's position relative to the center of the circle. Move the white dot to the left for the left foot's footsteps and wait for it. To the right! Thank you. To the right, yes, to the right for the right foot's footsteps. Or vice versa if you'd like to make people think they're losing their minds. Or that you've lost yours. To wrap things up in FMOD Studio, create a new sound bank called Animation and assign all three events to this sound bank. Save the FMOD project and rebuild all your sound banks by pressing F7. Now let's launch CryEngine and open the Showcase audio level. In CryEngine, open the Audio Controls Editor, which is right there in the Tools menu, to complete our audio setup. Create a new library called Animation and add the FMOD events to this library. Add the animation sound bank to the G underscore preloads library. In case the FMOD events do not show up, make sure you saved your FMOD project first. CryEngine reads all of the event information from the FMOD project files, not the sound banks. Save the audio controls and click yes in the pop-up window to reload the audio engine. Now the triggers that we created for footsteps on Foley now have to be associated with our character's movements. For this, we use the Character Tool. It allows you to define and set up characters by importing assets that you authored in third-party tools. Now, you'll find a lot of tutorials about the Character Tool here in our documentation or on our website with links to video tutorials as well. You'll find the Character Tool in the Tools menu under Animation. On the left, you can see all of the assets we can use with the Character Tool. For our purpose, we need three of the four categories, which are characters, skeletons, and animations. We'll play back an audio trigger by using animation events. Now events are actions that are played back by the animation system at a specific point during animation playback. Animation events can contain many different kinds of actions like particle effects and audio triggers. Animation events are stored in what we call an anim events file. Crazy, right? This file is referenced by the skeleton of a character. So let's navigate to the sample character skeleton. Open the skeleton's hierarchy on the left side until you can see the scaleproxy.chr params asset. When you select that, you'll probably notice that the properties menu on the right side of the character tool updates itself. It's like magic. You can also see a nice warning that we don't yet have an animation events file connected to our skeleton, so let's create one. Click on the button Create New Animation Events File below that warning and select a folder path where you want to save your anim events file. Usually we save our anim events file in the same place where the skeleton is stored, but you know, that's just us. Therefore, we open the objects folder, select characters, and then the sample character folder. Give that anim events file a proper name, for example, sample character, I know, I know, genius, and click create. Make sure you save the skeleton at this point by clicking on this disk icon on the right side of the properties window. Now that all of the important files are created, we only need to add the audio triggers to the animation. First, we need to open our sample character and the character tool. On the left side, navigate to the bottom of the character category and double click on the firstperson.cdf file. Now you'll see a preview of the actual character in the middle of the screen, as you can see. And you'll also see all of the animations associated with this character on the left side. And the animation we want to tag can be found in the bspace folder. bspace stands for blend space. And it's called to done bspace move strafe rifle. Dig the naming scheme. If you select this animation, the sample character starts to perform it. And you can see a locator traveling along the timeline on the bottom of the screen. You can use that locator to scrub along the timeline as well as pausing the animation, if you're curious. There are different speeds available for the timeline, but I'd recommend the normalized option as this is used for all timing-related information in the anim events. Now looking at the animation, we can see that the right foot touches the ground after about one-third of the animation is played. 
it's easy to create a new animation event. Just double click on the point in the timeline where the animation event should trigger. Once you've made it, the animation event's properties are now part of the properties window on the right side. By default, the animation event is set to play back an audio trigger. Click on the folder icon and select the right footstep trigger. Now I'd say that triggering the sound at the exact moment when the foot touches the ground is probably gonna feel a little bit late, but you can fine tune the timing until you're happy with the match between the animation and the audio. Do the same thing for the left footstep. And here's a little tip, add about 0.5 to the right footstep's playback time and use it for the left footstep to create a perfectly timed loop. Lastly, we need to add the Foley sound in the beginning of the animation. As it's quite long and not timed to any specific action in this case, it's pretty much irrelevant where we place the animation event. Now for animations that do need to have a specific playback position, we can add a joint on which the animation event is played. You can click on the small arrow on the left of the animation event and expand it to see the joint name option. You can select any joint that's defined in the skeleton to play a sound on it. The last thing we need to do now is click the hamburger menu in the top right corner and select File, Save All. Now we can jump into game mode with Control G and test the animation. Now there are several things that we could change at this point, like the mix in FMOD, adding more sounds to animations, etc. Now rather than making you watch me build up something complicated from scratch, I'll show you a great example of using the character tool in Anim Events, which are the ducks featured in our own game, Hunt Showdown. Everything you hear and see is driven by the character tool. For example, the water splashes are set via Anim Events, both the particle and the audio trigger. Even the audio logic is set in the character tool. The constant squawking of the ducks before they take off is a loop triggered by anim events. And it gets stopped as soon as the ducks take off, also achieved using, wait for it, anim events. So it's possible to create very rich and detailed audio for animations using animation events. That is it for part two of this audio tutorial series. In part three, we'll cover how audio gets implemented in a particle, again using FMOD Studio and the CryEngine Particle Editor. And just a reminder that although this video tutorial series just demonstrates FMOD Studio, you'll also find step-by-step -step written instructions for SDL Mixer, WIs, and also for FMOD Studio right here on our website. Adios, muchachos.